Alright, we are back in action for Operation Defiant Dream. We just uh, last finished that giant alien supply ship mission successfully, though with a uh, gutting loss um, in our roster from one of our finest troops going down. Uh, and now I'm out for some payback, so let's touch down uh, in the Burger King map. Uh, let's clear that no man's land and let's bring home some burgers and some dead aliens, please. I got the mood and I got the munchies for dead aliens. Let's get down there. This is Big Sky. Strike team has reached the AO. Requesting authorization to deploy. Solid copy, Big Sky. Strike one is cleared to engage. Okay, so let's kick things off here with a little bit of the uh, traditional pre-mission planning. Now, I've, uh, I've always been very open to feedback and hearing what you guys think. Uh, and I'm, I'm glad you guys, for the most part, uh, are enjoying these Live and Impossibles. You know, I always worry about the length. And in fact, some people have been saying uh, that I tend to waffle and go, go on tangents a bit with my explanations. Particularly when we're not actually in contact and I just talk forever and ever about things that, uh, you know, I take a long time and I stop and I don't do anything while I'm explaining. So to, to skip that, I'm going to try and just give you guys a concise, brief briefing uh, on what I want to do here. Uh, instead of explaining it like on a running plan for 10 minutes before we actually hit any contact. Not that it's going to take us very long to hit contact on the Burger King map, uh, because this map is tiny. So uh, to aid me in this, uh, let me show you something. I want you guys to remember throughout that uh, this is not a toy. This is a grown-up adult broadcasting enthusiast tool. Uh, we we've got this little puppy here to help us. So... Um, Let's hope that this is useful and helpful in marking things out. If not, you'll notice because there'll suddenly be a jump cut where I've cut out this entire telestrator bit. Nah, I'm just fucking with you. I, I just thought that'd be a funny joke. No, but seriously, let's try it out here. So I'm going to give us the uh, overhead view. Uh, and let's do a little bit of planning here. So this is like show mouse cursor except a little bit more and me trying to show you some visuals. So you've got the Burger King. Uh, the map is incredibly small. Uh, this is, you know, this is the extent of it. If you've never played it before, let me paint you guys a picture. Uh, you've got the exterior of the building here. There's a window here, window here. There's a back door uh, here that you can go through. Uh, you've got an exterior window here. There's some cars in the back. Uh, there's some dumpsters here. Uh, a van, a half cover car. Over here, you've got more cars and shit. Uh, lamp posts, etc. So it's a very small map. This is like XCOM's version of shipment from Call of Duty. It's incredibly small. But I quite like the map. I'm quite fond of it. It's interesting. It, it, it has some interesting battles on it. So let's say we can expect contact. We're on a heavy mission, so four to six pods. Let's say we can expect contact pretty fast. And considering the map is, you know, this is the middle line here, uh, we can expect it soon. So let's say we can expect pods here, here, probably here, and here. So worst case, let's say we could hit contact in all of these places. Of course, if we're incredibly unlucky, they could be hiding here or here. But let's discount that as something uh, that probably isn't true. <laughs> we'll see if that bites us. I certainly haven't experienced it yet. So let's assume that we've got contact in these positions. How do we want to go about this? Well, from the outset, you've got half cover uh, all around, except for a few key positions. You've got heavy cover behind this van, heavy cover behind this truck. All the rest of this is half cover. You've got one heavy cover sign here, that's it. All the good cover is here on the building. You have to get into the building is the issue here. Uh, now, when I first started playing this map, it was quite tempting just to go for the vans. But the problem is, you take these positions and then you get stuck behind them. Let's say we go, you know, over here. We take uh, contact up here. You've only got two positions that you can engage from behind this truck. Uh, you get turtled and you can't fit your squad. Uh, you know, you could be behind this lamp in a pinch, but it's not going to do anything. So you're going to get absolutely stuck here. There's no point going here unless this left flank is just supporting, like, a bigger actual push from you. So we're going to rule that out and say we can't really go there. Same with the van on the right. This is supporting a push. You can only leverage this heavy cover so far. Eventually you're going to get pinned by the fact that there's only two positions. You're going to make contact from here. Uh, worst case, you're going to get flanked from this position, and eventually you're going to be forced into taking the heavy cover and moving up. So, knowing that the heavy cover isn't actually going to help us that much, because we're going to get stuck and pinned behind it, instead what we want to do is 
try to minimize the damage of being stuck in half cover. And that means we're using half cover with a plan to get out of half cover. We're using it as a stepping stone. So in this case, what that means is here's all the good cover in the middle of the map on the uh, Burger King itself. Uh, think of it like we want to get in the side of the Burger King. We want to exploit its nice protective walls. We want to, if possible, get up on the roof, uh, take the pipes here and here, uh, and come up on the roof and then exploit the elevation bonuses, that plus 20 aim, uh, and lay fire down from the roof on everything. Th think of this map like King of the Hill, or considering where we are, Burger King of the Hill. That was the most horrible joke. I'm so sorry. I don't, I don't know why that popped into my head. Uh, but yeah, okay, think of it like Burger King of the Hill. Humor me. Uh, so what we want to do is get into the fast food restaurant. So considering there's windows here that these pods can see through, uh, the best way to minimize these right side activations uh, while still getting into the closest possible cover, I think is going to be to take the left side. So let's say uh, we've only got one, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We've got uh, seven positions and one, two, three, four, five, six troops. So one, two, three, four, five, six. So we could commit entirely to this left side here without needing to use the right side half cover. So we probably want to do something like move across here, leave um, maybe our infantry and our maybe our, our infantry and our gunner right about here. Uh, and then bring in our scout, who's going to be a point here. Scout's in good position to go up and get this mail if we don't make contact. Have our secondary assault backing up the scout to go on flanks. You want your engineer up close where they can huck grenades. Uh, and then moving to this bin position here is more likely to activate these additional pods, which we don't want. So it might be safer to leave our backup assault uh, just chilling out at the back if we don't take too much hard contact on the left. Or if we take hard contact on the left, just dash that assault around to this truck, use it as a supporting uh, element to flank around the left. And that's not going to be a, a big deal. You're not going to get stuck there because it's not your entire push. Um, so eventually, done right, that will only trigger these two pods. Uh, hopefully we can use the Mel as a stepping stone to all the while be advancing. Moving to this car here to do any flanks if we get lucky and we don't activate the middle. If we're dealing with both sides, we're going to want to get inside ASAP. So we're going to come in through this window here, take some heavy cover while we're fighting the middle. Hopefully not activate the right because we're far enough away. And then hopefully we're going to successfully assault this position, take the kitchenette inside, and then we're going to be able to exploit the door that is right here to set up a good breach, come out, take the roof, and potentially flank any remaining enemies on this side. Uh, if we only take contact on the left side, we could also just come around the left, not even risk activating anything inside the diner, come up the exterior pipe. Uh, and then that is going to allow us to, like I said, uh, exploit the roof and kill the fuck out of everything. So it's a pretty simple plan. We're just exploiting the left side. We're going to play aggressive and try and get to the walls uh, and get inside the building and exploit the urban advantage of garrisoning. Uh, and that's really it. We'll move quick to try and get this meld, and let's see what happens. I don't want to keep you guys uh, waiting for too long of all my telestrating, as fun as it is. So let's see, who is best to lead off from the start? Well, my scout's a bit far away, so we may as well lead off with Kilroy. Uh, this is likely to activate something. Let's find out what. I'm on the move. Visual on the Got something over here. Alright, two thin men, two seekers. Alright, things could be worse. Can't reach the thin men with a flashbang. Now possibly, if my engineer was in position next to Kilroy, we could get a grenade on them. That'd be really nice with Grenadier. Can't see that seeker behind the lamppost there, due to the way line of sight works. That's annoying. And my Grenadier is not even going uh, to be able to make it that far across. In fact, a lot of people aren't. So that is problematic. So we've got to kind of predict what are the Thin Men going to do in this position, and what can we hope to do in this position. Uh, we've got two Seekers here, uh, who are going to come around and assault us, that's no surprise. This one's about to flank me if I can't kill it, so hopefully I can get line of sight on it from the rest of my guys. The Thin Men are either going to come around and use the Meld and the Half Cover Car if they're dumb, or if they're smart, they're just going to jump right up, 
uh, and use the elevation bonus to uh, wreak havoc on me. They do the roof thing. Uh, there's not a lot I can do except prepare everyone to shoot them with uh, infantry bursts and whatnot and grenade their half cover. So if we survive the turn they spend setting up, we'll be fine. Uh, if they do the bottom thing, uh, it's going to be harder to root them out of the meld, but we're going to be less at risk of taking return fire. So throughout all of this, we also need to remember that the more we bunch up our troops, the more susceptible we are to acid. Oh, although in Scuba Man's case, he has got the med kit, but it will still affect his aim. So at this point, it actually becomes, we kind of want to spread out. Uh, our plan kind of goes out the window, and we don't want to advance too far on the right to um, to activate any more pods, but we want to keep s as spread as possible. I don't think it's worth the risk of activating the right side, especially with an activation uh, this strong early on. So instead, we'll just have to do our best. Now first off, I'm going to take a shot with Scuba on this Seeker. No kill, but what are you going to do? Now he can move up. Moi. And can you see from that position? Yeah, you can. So it's just Kilroy who's got a weird activation. Uh, well, Kilroy can always um, run and gun this Seeker, but I'd rather she be overwatching the second one once we kill the first. So who next? Let's try and keep uh, another medkit on this next bit because it's likely to be uh, likely to be harassed by thin men. Let's move Atlantan up to get those grenades up close for uh, next time. And worst case, we can grenade this seeker, so that's not bad. Forty-seven to hit's not bad either. Uh, so we may as well take the shotgun shot here because we're not going to Overwatch with a shotgun, uh, except for the other seeker. And the other seeker is probably going to be too far away uh, to necessitate the overwatch. Uh, next up, let's run the gunner. Uh, and we have to face the harsh realities of taking cover here before we do anything else. Because if we have to move up to positions that may activate the right, we want to make sure we've got our gunner still ready to suppress in the worst case if something horrible happens. So what's our movement here? Well, let's say we're running gun. Uh, ballistics is probably the best okay. person to take this limited cover that's going around uh, because he can run and gun to a better position next turn. 42, again, not bad. Please deal with this for me. No one's going to deal with this for me. Alright, DSM, you've got to take this spot. Uh, and... I don't know, you may as well take the 21% shot even though it's like a 1 in 5 because there's nothing else you're going to do with your shotgun. I get the feeling you're out of reaction range for the second Seeker that's going to try and strangle Kilroy or someone. Alright, so it's all down to the gunner, sadly. It's taken everyone to take down this single Seeker, and I may not even hit with this gunner. There you go. Let me put down my tokens before I forget how many people we're facing here. I shouldn't call them people, they're aliens. One Seeker left, two Thin Men. So that's going to leave us uh, to just basically look at these Thin Men and be angry. Now what can I do here to uh, keep them away from me? Well, I'm just going to have to overwatch for the Seeker. Kilroy's got the armor, so if anyone, I'd like them to be shooting at Kilroy, so there's no sense hunkering her down. So we're just going to have to overwatch for the Seekers, uh, and pray for the best. There's nothing we could really do about the Thin Men, uh, apart from fall back further from them. And even if we had fallen back, uh, they would have just exploited the rooftop to get really nice shots on us. So we're just going to have to overwatch the Seeker and pray for the best. And he's just shooting straight up. Okay, well that's going to cancel my overwatch, so that's great. Seeker's going to get a nasty shot on me. Don't know if I even remember to bring a scanner at this point. Oh, please just acid me. There you go. It's better than, better than shooting me and hitting me. Alright, and here comes what is hopefully... Okay, Seeker didn't do shit. So now at this point, uh, Kilroy is in a little bit of trouble here. Or is she? We've got options. Now, I could burn one of these med kits straight up um, to heal Kilroy of the Acid. A little known thing is that if you acid, uh, I mean, if you uh, med kit someone, if you cure them of the poison while they're standing in the poison, and then you run out of the poison, they're not going to get the poison reapplied to them. I think it's only when it hits them or you run into the area of effect of a poison, you get acided, not when you run out or you stay in it. 
So I could, uh, and this is going to give her more mobility, this, so this isn't a bad idea. I could uh, heal a wound on Kilroy. That's going to let her run and gun uh, and flank the Thin Men. But of course, the key to remember here is even if I do that, um, I'm still being suppressed. Kilroy can't do any crazy runs just yet. Now to make that stop happening, I need to hit the suppressor or suppress him myself. Actually, suppression doesn't cancel other people's suppression. So I just need to hit the suppressor. Uh, and my options to do that aren't super great. I'd have to run ballistics out into a run and gunned exposed flank, which we're not going to do because there could be more pods. My option really is to bring up a lantern to grenade... Uh, these two people. Now, if I move to these positions, I'm quite likely to be in range to grenade. But of course, we have to remember that at that point, we are very likely to activate any pods that could be inside the kitchenette. And that's going to make our lives even tougher. We are much less likely to activate this pod, but it's still possible uh, that there could be just an unlucky activation through one of these windows from our position over here. But of course, what we have to remember is that at some point, we're going to have to move up here. So... You know, better late than never, I think, is how this is going to work out. Particularly with that Seeker on the loose. So let's bring the Engineer up. On the move. And we got very lucky in not activating anything extra. Now we are going to damage that Thin Man. Doesn't matter how much we damage him for. Just matters that we're going to damage him. And we're going to cancel that suppression. And we're just going to pray that blowing up the wall doesn't activate any more pods. Because we don't need that right now. Oh my god, are you going to blow up? <laughs> Did a specialist? Is, are you a specialist? A specialist HE grenade just one shot a car. But I guess on the flip side it didn't deal any damage to the Thin Men for some reason, so I got kind of screwed. So we've got to remember that that Seeker's still out there. Uh, but did I bring a scanner? Did, was I that smart? Well, apparently I was too stupid to bring a battle scanner. Um, go me, right? So uh, it doesn't even matter. I can't really plan for the Seeker apart from overwatching it. So it seems like what would be a good choice here is running gunning Kilroy to this meld once she's uh, de-acided and then getting a nice easy flank on this Thin Man who will have no cover. Then we can uh, potentially move up and suppress with the help of the med kit, move the gunner into acid and then suppress the remaining Thin Man uh, and or shoot him. Um, the only problem with this plan of course is going to be if there's additional pods here we're about to activate them and that's not going to be fun. But at least Kilroy will be in a heavy cover position. And like I said, we have to move up at some point. Now I have the ability to take a shot. Uh, because I have immunity to acid. It's going to affect my aim. But I can still take a shot without taking damage from the acid. Because the medkit gives me immunity from the damage. So it's going to waste ammo if the shot doesn't hit. But I may as well take a 1 in 3 here. And see if I can take out this thin man first. Then use my second action the medkit. Alright, didn't happen. Let's heal and let's get the show on the road. So this puts me one medkit down, which is unfortunate if I take more damage later. But I think it might save me some damage now, because otherwise I haven't got a lot of options. Alright. Make it happen. No additional pods! Very nice. Alright. Show me it was worth it. Of course it wasn't. Alright, well we're going to have to keep doing our best here. And that's all we can do. So let's run and gun our second assault. Make sure he's not cutting the corner into the acid because that would be a nasty surprise. And we're just going to have to get close enough to make the shotgun work for us, I think. Ta! 36. That's not working for us. What can we do here? What can we do? Well we come right here, we can exploit what the Thin Man's probably about to do. You see, we've got this Thin Man flanked. He is not flanking any of us, and we've got him flanked. So the AI is going to realize he is in an uh, unequivocally bad position. And it's going to want to move that Thin Man. Now, gunners get uh, opportunist on any shots taken when their suppressed target tries to flee. As long as they're using a, a light machine gun or a saw, opp uh, opportunist is automatically granted the gunners who are taking suppression reaction shots. Not normal overwatch, just suppression. So what we can do here is suppress this target, 
and we're going to get an exposed uh, opportunist shot. So that's going to be a 78 accuracy shot against this thin man, and it can crit because it's opportunist uh, when he tries to move. And he will try to move because we've got him flanked. If he stays there, he knows he's dead next turn, so he'll try to run the overwatch. Uh, the best he can do is really dash it and add a penalty to it. Meanwhile, uh, we've still got the scout to move up and try and help us out. But you're not really going to do much from there. All the scout is going to do is overwatch for the inevitable seeker who's coming. That leaves us with this guy. What do we do? Is a 36% uh, worth taking, or should we just overwatch the seeker that's still coming? Uh, well, with range benefits like... I mean, that thin man's close enough to get range benefits on Kilroy. She's really in the line of fire, but... Hopefully, because of the heavy cover, she's going to be alright. I think overwatching the Seeker is probably the best thing I can do here. So, let's set up that overwatch to uh, deal with this guy when he runs. Let's overwatch. Let's overwatch. And let's see what happens. I really wish that car had blown up that thin man, but it's pretty bullshit the car blew up in the first place, so... I'll give him that one. So you're going to run, and hopefully you're about to die. Ah, oh, raw deal. Absolutely raw deal. But at least he's dashing. He's out of the fight for this turn. So at least he's nullified. Now what's your play? Can you're I shooting a Kyoroi and you're suppressing. Oh, I didn't get the meld. Why didn't I get the meld? I'm stupid. I hope the meld doesn't expire. Okay, nice. <laughs> I should have clicked the meld. I can't believe I forgot to get it. Okay, but this thin man has put himself in a pretty poor position now because uh, I can simply flashbang him or suppress him. Well, I can't suppress him, but I can flashbang him to cancel his suppression. Uh, and then that's going to let me you know, do, you know, whatever the hell I want to him, really. I'd like to run on the left here uh, and get the other thin man, but it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to get to any cover to do so. Which is a shame. If only I still had running gun, right? It'd be nice to avoid using a flashbang on this thin man, but uh, my infantry's aim is it'll still all effed up. Now, I could just suppress and lower the odds of his suppression hitting, but... Uh, or I could throw another grenade at him, but it's a waste of a grenade. Uh, but then I have more grenades than I have flashbangs, don't I? Don't I? Yeah, yeah. No, no, I don't. Actually, I've got the same amount, I think. Alright, fair. I've got, you know, similar amounts of flashbangs to whatever the hell you want to call it. So let's just go ahead and start with a flashbang to nullify his suppression. I'm used to playing more late game uh, in some of my other campaigns where I stop taking as many flashbangs because my assault will have, like, armor plates and shit on. Grab that meld now that you're not being suppressed, because I'm sure that was making a big difference. And then you've got a 67% to hit him. Uh, it's probably, you know, we could move up and get a better accuracy shot, but that thin man is liable to run back next turn. Uh, and this way we're staying in the heavy cover. And if he wants to hit any of our half cover troops, he's going to have to run a long way, hopefully not have a move. I mean, he's probably going to take this seat spot and get a shot on people, but... Yeah, I mean, at least if he moves anywhere else, he's not going to get a half cover shot on anyone. So without any other options there... Uh, let's take a shot. Well, I, I just really can't hit a shot to save my life so far on this mission. I guess all we have to do uh, is keep trying fruitlessly to engage. <laughs> At least he's flashbanged, I guess. Christ. Alright, well, you may as well move up. That Seeker's still coming too. I, I, I'm not forgetting about that Seeker. Well, you've got a 48% to hit, and he's flashbang, so I'm hardly going to use you to suppress. So, can you please deal with this? Good God, have I hit a shot yet? <laughs> wow. I would really like someone to hit this guy at some point. Alright, uh, we've got a, still got a... Oh, is that him? That's the Seeker right there, is it? We've still got to get ready for this Seeker. Who is about to pop out in a surprising position I never expected. Your you may as well reload yeah, with your go. shitty acid at aim. Alright, no one suspected this. Can I hit? Thank you. That is a seeker down. 
Now that Thin Man is trying to come back. He's going to get a shot at Kilroy. No, he's choosing to run. Do what you want, Thin Man. Your flashbangs, you're going to acid me. Fuck. They're just keeping Kilroy down. And we don't want that. That's what we don't want. Alright, let me add four more floaters to the mix here. So that is high on the list of things we did not want to happen. Uh, the problem here is it makes us even more want to take better cover to deal with the floaters, but it makes it even more dangerous if we do that we activate additional pods into this hell. Oh god, this is just terrible. I need to hit that car with my grenades, but uh... And acid is still affecting the aim of my infantry. Kilroy's in a hell of a position. She can't really fall back um, or do anything without taking the acid penalty. And her AoE, uh, her AoE throwing range is nullified a lot because of the acid. Everyone else is stuck in half cover. Uh, it's looking pretty poor. Our current position is looking pretty poor. I need this damn thin man to die, man. I need him to go down. I, I just really need him to go the fuck down. Alright? Um, and it would help if you could do it. 29 is not what you usually want to take. It's it's a 1 in 3 though. When, God, we've done badly so far, so maybe we're due for a little bit of luck. Now I know that's not how it works. Gambler's fallacy and all. Uh, but it really would help me out a lot. And the, the guy's got a full ammo load, so I'm willing to take the chance. Finally. Finally, something good happening. So, now we're going to leave those extra rounds in the magazine for later. Now, I think due to my position here, and especially um, with the truck helping, I should be able to hunker Kilroy in this position behind heavy cover and have fairly good defense, and probably hunker the rest of my team, uh, by and large, and have fairly good defense on them as well. Uh, now, I might run people uh, to get them in better positions for next turn, but apart from that... Uh, my current position might be worth sticking to. And then I can hunker. Hopefully my infantry is going to have the acid wear off by next turn. And that's going to give me two shots that are going to help a lot. That's really been a huge pain in my side. The fact that my infantry isn't really helping at this point. Scuba's not really doing a whole lot. Uh, it'll give me a chance to reload Zim. Uh, Atlantan can get a little bit closer hopefully. No, Atlantan's not going to be able to get closer. Atlantan can chill the fuck out. Um, and my scout can like uh, get out of the way and get a slightly better position. And watch that left side. So let's run the scout first. Great. You're gonna hunker, you're gonna hunker. And this is really, this is really not what you want. You don't want to let the aliens get it all their way and, and dictate the flow. But uh, we don't have a whole lot of choice at the moment, I'm afraid. We do not have a whole lot of choice. So you're going to move back a little bit and reload. You're going to hunker. You're going to hunker ballistics. Atlantan, you're also going to hunker. Scuba Man, you're going to hunker. Uh, and this is, you know, this is the lowest of the low when it comes to tactics, but we really just need to turtle this turn um, and just pray that the next turn doesn't look so scary. And with Floater's Overwatch pinning me... Uh, no guarantee of that. Oh, well, I'm glad the scout's over there to deal with that, at least. That would have been nasty. Alright, they really don't want Killer to leave. So, have we still got eyes on all of them? Yes. So, what you're seeing is classic floater tactics. The old, uh, suppress the target, and then, woo, go all the way the fuck over the map, uh, fix and flank. So, how do we deal with this? Well, not very well is the answer. Now, I mean, luckily we've got the scout in position to deal with this guy. Uh, it is going to leave her in a nasty spot, possibly flanked by encroaching enemies. But if we take this left side, uh, her line of sight will be blocked unless this floater comes left. And we can nullify that by using this trooper to suppress the overwatching floater. Now additionally, suppressing the overwatching floater is going to take his aim down if he tries to take a shot at Kilroy. Kilroy's probably going to have to keep chilling out because if she moves or does anything, she's going to get acid damage. 
uh, which could trigger a panic and also takes the health down, which we don't want. Uh, and she's not going to be very useful in her current state anyway because the acid's fucking with her aim. So we'll probably still be hunkering her. Uh, we've, then we've got one overwatch uh, and a thin man left to deal with. Now the ideal, ideal way to deal with this would be to move up through the building uh, and just start fragging the hell out of them. But with only three pods activated so far, in fact no, two pods because it was combined thin man and seekers, we know there's at least three more pods out there on the map on this heavy abduction. And we don't want to activate them, but we're going to be in an even worse position. So we've got to play over handicap here and restrict uh, which areas of the map we're allowing ourselves to go. And just say, you know, the rest of it, it'd be nice if we could use this, but we just can't risk it at this point. We've got to play what we've got. Because as bad as this is, um, you guys know it can get worse. Alright, well, let's take care of this guy first, hopefully. Please don't roll a four. Beautiful. Well, at least that's one floater who's offered himself up to our altar of sacrifice. Now, next, we're going to suppress this guy, most likely. How are we going to deal with the rest of them? Well, I'll tell you what. I wish it was my engineer in this heavy cover position. Or I wish I could risk moving up to this position uh, and grenading. Because both of those things would make me a very happy camper right now. A grenade would really deal with those two guys at the back. Particularly when you see that this guy only needs one health to die. Again, I'm wishing this car had blown him up. Scuba Man could help with that. As could Ballistics. I have got Run and Gun on uh, Ballistics ready to go as well. Um, but it's not really super handy just yet. Because I would get overwatched if I tried to move up. Hmm... Well, considering I've kind of got to wait for them to come to me, uh, I kind of need to just play my position. Hunker Kilroy, uh, if I can kill this guy with my shotgun and or my infantry, hey, great, you know, that's less for me to worry about. So maybe what I'll do is I'll start with a shot on them with my shotgun. Nope. Adjusting sights. I'll take a shot with my infantryman. No, I just can't hit a damn thing today. Alright, well we're gonna need to reload that infantryman to get ready for uh, what else is coming. I just can't believe how much I'm not fucking hitting. Um, let's bring the engineer around after we deal with the overwatch. So that she's in a better position, less awkward. Uh, and Atlantan then is in a better position to come around and grenade. Hopefully once we can get Kilroy off this spot. If we could get our engineer into this meld spot, she'd be able to grenade with impunity. Uh, we're just going to have to gunner this floater. And let's try and keep our ammunition up, because you never know, maybe the floaters will get stupid uh, and they'll launch another one behind us and make themselves easier to deal with. To At least there's no more seekers to deal with, guys. Alright, now if they're smart, they'll move up. Yep, there we go. And they'll take better shots at my half-cover troops. That would be the smart move. Apparently they are not smart, and they're instead going to dash at me. Alright. You're going... And once again... Oh, that is a difficult position to deal with, you little bitch. But at least you're not on Overwatch, I guess. And you're going to Overwatch me, aren't you? Now you're going to shoot. Okay. One Overwatch to deal with. One incredibly difficult floater to root out. Oh, but we've got the grenade. The grenade's going to save us there. As much as I would like to grenade this thin man, we're going to need to use it to kill that floater, I think. So let's say we can probably, uh, pretty reliably... Oh, I could flashbang these two if I really need to as well, which is going to help. Let's say we can probably, uh, pretty reliably kill this floater and this thin man this turn. That's going to leave us to suppress the overwatching floater. Uh, and I don't know what the hell we're going to do about the last floater. Pray that he's an idiot, I guess. Now, I can run up my uh, scoot to flashbang those two as well if I need to. Hmm. I wonder if I move up closer, if I'll be able to get a close range shotgun shot on this floater. Because that's very likely to hit at that range, but line of sight might screw it up. If I step out there, I should have line of sight. I think. I think I should. And then that's going to let me uh, deal with him quite nicely. Alternatively, I could try moving up on the left, and that might give me a good shot on him. 
I don't know. I don't, I don't know. It could work. It could also fail catastrophically. How far can you throw a flashbang, kid? Alright, that puts you at the extent of the blast at this position. That's one, two, three, four, five or so tiles away. Two, three, four. I'll tell you what. If you can convince me that you could throw a flashbang if you moved up. Let's see. So that the impact end is going to be right there. One, two, three, four. You could probably from this position throw a flashbang that hit both of these enemies. Maybe if you got real lucky. So even if you can't shoot this fl floater with your shotgun, you might still be helpful. And hopefully be able to shoot the floater from there. No, you can't. Okay. Well, we knew it was probably going to happen. Can you flashbang both these enemies? I was worried it wouldn't be able to get the floater. And it looks like I'm going to be... Just right. Oh, 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 no, you can get it. You can get it. You can get it. You can't get it, can you? No, you can't. Fuck. Well, you can get that thin man. I knew it could happen. I probably should have just taken the scout shot on the floater, rolled the 50, and hoped that, you know, it's one less headache for me to deal with. But at this point, I guess you could, uh, you know, I hope you guys can appreciate why I don't really trust 50% shots at this point in the mission. Oh, and that's quite scary, too. If you look at this, my grenade is liable to blow up that truck cab if I throw it at that floater. Well, that's a real doozy. I thought I'd just be able to get the cover without getting the, uh, the cab, but apparently it's all one construction. And on the off chance, it freak blows up the truck cab like it just did that car. Uh, that means DSM is going to be in a world of problems. So what do we do now? Um, we, we probably go to the bathroom. Jesus, my, my stomach hurts. Hang on, I'll be right back. My stomach just started hurting. <gasps> All right, let's get back into it. Uh, so, that's really an advertisement they should put up in the XCOM barracks. Where will you be when diarrhea hits? Because you could be the commander of XCOM, and you could be laying a lot of people down. Um, but, uh, luckily it did let me think about things. Uh, and one of those things is, uh, we need to get down to priorities. Now, priorities here are, this floater cannot be allowed to hit anybody with these criticals. He either has to be killed or completely neutralized. Now, my options here to reliably kill him are to destroy his cover with the grenade, that would mean falling my scout back, and then it's all but certain that my infantry and my shotgun are together are going to get pretty easy kills on him because he'll have no cover. Um, my other choice is to flashbang and suppress him. And pray that his range uh, bonuses, oh, plus 20, no, I don't like that idea anymore, uh, weren't enough. See, let's say floaters have about 70 aim, let's say they're comparable to us right now. Uh, you would flashbang, which would reduce that down to about 35, and then you'd suppress him, which would take another 30 off that down to about 5%. But range penalties are added after everything else, uh, as you can see right here. Wait, am I not acid anymore on Kilroy? I'm only suppressed! The little red arrow is suppression! Wow, you recovered from that poison incredibly quickly. This changes everything. All right, now if we can stop that suppression, Kilroy's good to go. Fuck yeah, if I can stop the suppression... Oh, this changes everything. Oh, man. Oh, I'm sorry. I've, I've been leading you all astray. I thought Kilroy was still acided. This is great news. I just have to uh, kill and or suppress that floater. Uh, and, and the game's good. All right. Um, you know what? Let me, let me respect your time while I actually think about what I'm going to do here with this new information that's just turned all that on its head. Alright, that, that didn't take a lot, as long to think through as I did. Um, but I figured I'd actually uh, cut it and just think uh, instead of waffling for five minutes to respect you guys' time a little bit more. Um, but this changes everything. Now all I need to do is deal with this uh, Overwatch and things are looking good. Now let me, let me show you what I'm talking about here. So, we've got our running guns back. That's going to be crucial here. And no, they're not acided. So let's say we deal with the Overwatch with suppression, straight up. Can I do that? Oh, I'm gonna have to move the gunner the fuck up to do it. Bitch. Oh, balls. Okay, well anyway, the plan is, if we can get that to work, nullify this Overwatch. Uh, flash, uh, flashbang, whatever, or suppression. Suppress the floater, let's say, if we can get it to work. 
run and gun ballistics. Ballistics is going to then run and gun kill this floater. That suppression is now gone on Kilroy. Kilroy can then run and gun uh, and shotgun this floater. Close and personal is going to mean that when this flanked thin man tries to run, Kilroy gets an ultra close range close and personal shot on him because the thin man will be flanked. Uh, unless the thin man decides to take a flank shot on uh, on ballistics, which is the worrying part of this entire plan. But otherwise, uh, that should work. That's then going to lead to a grenade on this heavy floater right or oh, this, this normal floater right here. Leading to some nice infantry shots. And that should be anything. What can go wrong with this plan? Well, we could fail to kill this floater. We could fail to kill this floater. Lots can go wrong with this plan. Um, so what's our backup plans in case things do go wrong? Well, we can pull a suppression right here. That's one backup plan. Uh, I mean, not a suppression, a flashbang right here. Uh, and then we could... Uh, we could still pray that... These two will try to run because they're flanked. Maybe not the floater, but the thin man will at least. Uh, it's it's going to be risky, but in this situation, with the shit that is happening to me right now, I think it's the best I've got. The only issue is I need to get in range of this fucking son of bitch floater. But I can't. Bugger me. That's really killing this plan. If I could just get a flashbang on this SOB, uh, we would be totally fine. Suppression is how this is going to happen. And it's kind of a guessing game at that point as to when I'm going to be in range to actually suppress. Is it going to be here? If I move and it isn't, you know, I'm fucked. This is going to be too far. That's probably going to put me in Overwatch range and I'm going to tank the Overwatch with my face. Oh, decisions, decisions, decisions. God, that makes things tough. Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, maybe they don't need to be that tough. Maybe if I can get this floater to spot my lightning reflexes scout running left, who wasn't going to do a lot anyway because she has to move away from uh, this position before we grenade it, maybe I can draw the overwatch with her face. Position confirmed. Line of sight, line of sight, line of sight. Yes! Get shot at for me. Classic. Okay, now, uh, additional things that could go wrong here is, of course, is activating a pod of sector pods over here, or whatever other horrible beastie, uh, we're facing for this month. But failing that, and failing horrifically inaccurate shots, I think this is the best option we have. Prepare to see me be wrong. Okay, so 88. I mean, come on, that's that's not bad, is it? 68! Ooh, that's much worse. I've been having very, very bad luck with shots this mission. Um... Uh, but when you're committed, you're committed! Uh, and we are most certainly committed at this point. How unlucky can you get? Fuck yeah, that's right. You can't get that unlucky. That's total hyperbole. You can totally get very unlucky. Uh, but that's good, the plan is proceeding uh, swimmingly. Now we need to kill this next floater. In fact, first, uh, I would go so far as to say, uh, as we need to make sure this one dies before we start burning people who have flashbangs and shit uh, and doing our damage control. So first, uh, let's throw a good old frag grenade up here and let's see what can happen. Oh, you've still got cover, have you? Fire in the hall. Great. Awesome. That just makes me so happy that you still have cover after taking a, a point blank. D don't even worry about it. Just don't even worry about it. I'll, you know, I'll just shoot you. I'll just shoot you. How about that? Nope! Don't worry about it. Grenade didn't even need to do the thing that it needed to do. It's alright! Didn't have to happen. It wasn't a plan that had that go off perfectly at all. Thank you! Thank you, Scuba Man 3D! Maybe if it was a 10 health outsider, you would have killed it five turns ago. Alright, so that's gonna leave me to now 
try my horrific best to deal with this floater. I can't believe you need a run and gun that, Kilroy. That's almost pathetic how how short your mobility range is right now. Alright, do your best. Moving out. Oh man, this is not... Uh, this is not gonna crit, is it? <laughs> uh, it's not critting! It's not critting, coach! Oh, coach, it's not critting! Oh, fuck! And now you can see him for some reason, Gunner? Can you? Can you see him now? Oh, what to what to fucking do at this point? Um, he's not going to give a shit about suppression. Oh, ballistics, your life is so low too. He's not going to give any shits about suppression because he's close enough to have incredible. He's got elevation bonuses as well, and he's got incredible range bonuses on ballistics. So let me tell you right now that suppression will not get us out of this uh, this hell that I've put us in. The only thing that will save us is if Zim can take this shot with the saw. Now, considering we haven't been able to hit 70% all mission, um, good Christ, I'm just going to close my eyes for this one. Ah. Fuck! Ballistics, get out of there! Duck, man, duck! Come on, Kirai. You at least can make my day. Oh, ballistics, look the fuck out, man. Gonna need to reload soon. What? He didn't. He didn't move? <laughs> what? What is wrong with floaters? What is he doing? What, what, what have you done, Floater? I guess he just freaked out because there's so much shit around him. Is this a trick? You know, I, I, I try to read all my comments and quite often people say that despite the situations I get into, I just have this weird and like unnatural luck and I'm starting to think they might be right <laughs> I really am god floaters can be fucking stupid sometimes <laughs> well ballistics he was gonna shoot you so you do the honors never hesitate great man told me that once alright well um Enemies down. We are down to zero active contacts uh, there, but for the grace of God, Ballistics is still amongst us, or at least he's not horribly wounded, uh, let alone dead. I don't even know what the hell happened there. Um, <laughs> I, I don't even know what the hell that was, but let's move on instead of uh, <laughs> trying to figure it out. We'll let the scientists postulate what the hell the floater was thinking at that point. But we're in a good position, we're set up for success now. Um, because... Uh, dun, 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 now we have dealt with a side of the map. This gives us lots of important information. Boop. We've dealt with this entire side of the map for now. Now we've dealt with two pods, that means we have got an existing... Actually we've dealt with this part too a bit, but yeah. yeah. We've got an existing three pods somewhere out in uh, the, the bad zone. The unknown zone. The scary zone. Uh, we haven't had to use too many of our consumables, and nobody's wounded or dead. So we're in a great position now. Consider from this point on, since we're facing about two to three pods, consider it now a moderate to light abduction. Except we started in a great position now. Because now, uh, we don't have to worry about fighting our way up to the building, uh, tooth and nail, activations left and right. Now we've already dealt with some of the activations, we've come out of the fire, uh, and now we're in prime position uh, to sneak up to the pipe and get up on the roof. We're in prime position to sneak into the kitchenette and exploit the doors. We're in prime position to exploit this door. Uh, and of course, exploiting all these doors is going to give us beautiful ambush positions. Exploiting the roof is going to give us beautiful elevation bonuses. Um, things are looking good now. 
So let's take a look back down at ground level uh, and let's try and decide how we're going to do this. Well, we're going to need to reload overrun first, uh, but where do we want people positioned for this? Well, like I said, uh, this position right here, uh, exploiting these two doorways is going to be key. You're going to be able to fit uh, two operatives per door here, um, which is, you know, a fantastic economy of cover in a map where cover is pretty limited in the sense that, you know, you can get flanked if you're taking just the exterior walls. But good cover like this, where you're protected from uh, sides with walls uh, and half cover, this is a little bit more harder to come by. It's better than the exterior. So that's quite good to get. Um, and then additionally, we're also now able to take these positions because we're not as worried about being flanked from the left side now that we've dealt with it. So we can take this heavy cover sign, we can take these two walls, this drink machine, uh, and we can even now, if we were, if we were just focusing on this pod, uh, we could even take this van and engage from this van as a supporting flanking element so that when we engage through the kitchenette and through this position, the enemies take cover behind these cars, and then, what do you know, you've got flankers ready in position to exploit them and wreck their shit. Um, but we are not going to be focusing just on that side, of course, uh, because as soon as we move up to these positions and open this, uh, this door right here, we're liable to activate everything that is in this side of the map. The only thing we're not going to activate is whatever's left on this side. So what's probably a safer way to activate is focus on dealing with this one slice at a time. Let's make our slices here. So let's say this is slice one, this is slice two, this is slice three. So we can minimize our exposure to these other two slices by coming around the left side, getting a, like a nice little line of sight activation through here. That's just gonna see slice one and just a little bit of the second slice. Uh, and then, you know, if we get lucky and all the other enemies are in three and there's only one pot in one, we can also move around and exploit them with easy protected flanks uh, using the van and everything. We can also have people who are ready to go on the pipe to move up uh, and get elevation bonus shots down because you've got corner cover here. This is critical. That's going to cover you from the second and third slice pods. You've got additional cover you can use to exploit them. Uh, it's a very good position. In fact, you can see this is one of the best roofs in the game. Look at this great hard cover. Uh, it's look at like look at these little jigsaw piece corner cover roof spots. It's fantastic. It's a great great roof, and it's also got a little little thingy going on with it. Um, but you know, enough talking aside. What I'm trying to get at is we'll move our close combat troops into the kitchenette. They're going to be ready to come out of this doorway and shoot shit. We're going to move our longer range troops, uh, like our gunner, right here. And he's going to be able to engage from this van. And then our engineer can hang around around here. And you know what? Ideally, our engineer will come up to this pipe and start lobbing grenades wherever the hell uh, Atlantan, Atlantan fucking feels like it, really. Because at that point, the world is our oyster. So we've got our plan set. We're going to have assault interior, scout interior. Um... Maybe even put one of the assaults or scouts on the pipe to come up the pipe and then lob flashbangs and also be in a good position to get high accuracy elevation shotgun shots. Kilroy is the best for that because she's got gunslinger for the long range shots and she's got the most armor. And with half cover, even though you've got amazing uh, elevation bonuses on your offense, it doesn't help your defense at all. So it'll help her defense by having that much armor. She's the best person to take that spot. And eventually, once we've dealt with this section of the map and it's safe to move on, we'll load everybody up onto the roof uh, and this doorway here, and we'll just exploit the hell out of them. So the most dangerous part of the map is going to be right here. If we can deal with this part of the map, um, the rest is just going to be easy pickings. So let's get moving. I still can't believe what the fuck that floater did. That made no sense at all. It's as though he panicked. It's as though in his little floater mind, he thought, do I really want to kill this poor human? Because you know what? These humans are going to kill me as soon as I pull the trigger. Why should I do that? Do I even like the alien overmind? Maybe I should think about surrendering and putting down my weapon. Now he didn't put down his weapon, but maybe that's just because we didn't give him enough time. 
Maybe if we'd sat here and waited, he would have. Because in the, the hesitation he displayed to not shoot ballistics, we shot the fuck out of him. Because XCOM don't hesitate. Rule number one. It's sad. If You know what? Let me, let me place my uh, stance on this. If aliens ever tried to surrender to me in this game, I'd... You know what? I'd let them. I feel kind of bad about murdering them sometimes. They're probably just slave races. The floaters are chopped up mutons. I mean, if you've never noticed, they are literally... See how they look very similar? They're literally like little runty mutons that have been chopped up and cybernetically enhanced into these jetpack monstrosities that feel nothing but pain. Uh, we don't know who pays the Thin Men's checks. Maybe they're slaves. Maybe they like it. I don't know. The Sectoids could quite easily be little psychic baby slave warriors. Child... child fighters. Maybe... maybe, maybe they don't want to fight. And it just makes me want to get arc throwers even more and capture them and take them home. Cause I just I just don't want to I just don't want the bloodshed. You know what? If they were willing to come peacefully, Rock and roll. I'd take them in peacefully. Headed there now. Enough killing. The killing has to end. But we heard thin men and floaters out there, and these guys aren't surrendering. I feel like they would have come out with a white flag if they were surrendering. Nope. Oh, what a. <laughs> What a cute little pod. One of everything. Sectoids, Seeker, and Thin Men. Well, at least they're coming to us. This lets us exploit them but, uh, without activating the rest of the map, which is good for me. Still no battle scanner, so uh, the Seeker can still do whatever the hell it wants. But we are in prime position to grenade him. In fact, probably the most horrible thing this has done is it's blown open this door and now we can't surprise people from it. Fuck you, Thin Man. I wanted to use that door. Ah, but no hard feelings, I guess. Let's just chuck a grenade in there and end your suffering. I'm on the move. Alright. Alright, alright, alright. Moving out. Move your, uh... Just like in movement where you're moving your furthest person before you commit to anything, just as in combat. Move your furthest scout here like I'm doing, because if we had got a really weird... Very rare 1% chance activation of a pod that just happened to be in this position uh, right here. Then our grenadier would have thrown the grenade and she'd have been committed to that position and been flanked and killed. But now we know it's pretty safe. Now I'd like to destroy as, as little of the cover here as possible. Because I, I don't want to blow up these walls because I want to use them later. But at the same time I haven't got sapper on the engineer. I can't really afford to be that choosy. And at least destroying this cover prevents the sectoid from using it later. So we'll just have to make do of the roof, which we have plenty of roof. Alright, so the kitchenette is in flames. That is a bad zesty burger that has happened. I am going to wreck your shit with my machine gun. Thank you. Now that leaves us to overwatch the Seeker and the Sectoid. So Scuba Man can move down to overwatch the Sectoid. Yes, he can. Thinking about taking that right spot, but I'm going to not bother. Uh, and then that will allow Kilroy to move up. We'll put Ballistics back here for uh, Seeker duty. Got it covered. And everybody's working for the weekend. Alright. Everyone's just coming to see what the fun is at this rate. Good shot. Finally. Three more floaters have burst in through the, uh, the window here. And now they're all gonna run away. Great. Do whatever the hell you want. Seeker coming. Fuck you. Fuck off. Seriously, Seeker. Fuck off. What do you think you are? You can't do that. And the Sectoid's been a little baby. Typical. Well, with those floaters in the air, now it's time to start exploiting this roof before they exploit it on us, I think. So I need to start uh, covering ground that are left here. Solid copy. If there's any more pods, we want to find out about them early. If not, we want everybody stacking up on this uh, th this corner here getting ready to go up the uh, pipe. Yes. Yes, that is what we want. Yes, 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 yes. No more pipes. No more activations. I mean, good. Good times. Great times. Great times. Moving out. 
So everybody's going to get ready to exploit this pipe next turn. We'll leave the pipe itself open so that the scout with lightning reflexes can be the first up to deal with any floaters that are on Overwatch watching that area. Um, but the rest of us, we're just going to get ready. We're just going to get ready up here. Ass. Except for our base of fire can remain in position. That's fine. But uh, all our assaulting dudes, they are going to start moving on up. Rolling out. Shit, that sector could have run around my left flank. I probably shouldn't have put ballistics there. But it sounded like he just ran away, so... That's why I played it the way I did. Scuba man, you've got a position you can take there, buddy. Bien. Bien, yes. Very, a very bien spot. Ho ho ho! Hello! Hello, little man! What are you doing there? Oh, you little shit! <laughs> the sector is trying to... Trying to open the door or something? I don't know what the hell he's doing. Well, fuck you for not dying, Sectoid, but... Shit. Guess I just gotta cover the floaters now. Yeah, no. Alright, and they are indeed coming across the roof. Smart move, good play. The roof is key. Now, we don't really know what they're doing up there. They could potentially be overwatching. This one's running through. Yeah, you bet that Sectoid's running for his life. Running for goddamn cover. Floaters, why are you so stupid? Now you've now you've exposed yourself to a machine gun. Floaters. What? <sighs> Maybe they're just these really dumb puppy dogs. Oh, they can't move through a diagonal. Why can't you move through a diagonal? How little do I know about this game? Uh, well, we may as well move the engineer left. I'm rolling. This little sectoid over there. Oh yeah, that's still a diagonal. I'm not helping my case at all here. <laughs> okay, well, let's delay the rooftop activation, because you know what? Uh, he's probably still hanging around up here. Uh, which means he probably isn't going to be able to come over this barrier and shoot me next turn anyway. So it should be fine to just chill out another turn. Oh, I want to blow up your little cover, you little son of a... Hmm. It's kind of a waste of a grenade, but this might be all the pods on the map, so... Maybe it's not so bad. Maybe I should get out there with my assault. Fuck the roof. Maybe not. Tell you what I'll do. Classic tactic. Uh, let's look at our prospects before we commit. Go up the roof. Hey! Guess who's not on Overwatch? These two idiots. Alright. Now, are you going to be able to? You're going to be able to step out and see him, surely? Yes, yes, you are. There's no way that wouldn't happen. Aye, aye, Commander. Thanks. Say goodbye to your head, wanker. Now, what did I do there? Why was that safe to do? Because if you only move one tile uh, in someone's Overwatch, the Overwatch doesn't trigger. So, for example, if I walk up this pipe. Let me get the annotations out. If I walk up this pipe, doot 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 doot, and there's a floater over here, and he's got his little Overwatch eye on, and he's got his little, his little angry face, and, you know, humor me while I, while I fully draw him here, because I'm committed to this now, but he's got his little, his little angry jetpacks, he's got his little gun, and he's like, I'm so angry, and he's overwatching you. You just move up into this position, and then you would have to move here. If you move two tiles, if you go but but with your move, that Overwatch is going to trigger you. You're not, you're not going to be a happy camper. But by moving one tile, you are then completely free to jump back off, and you will not trigger Overwatch. If you do not move into the zone of Overwatch, if you do not move a tile of movement in their vision, you will be fine. And because by doing this, you are immediately entering and exiting their vision, they never have a chance to shoot you. This is something you can use in the opposite way as well. Uh, for example, if there was someone right here who couldn't see the roof, it's important they can't see the roof, obviously, because if they can see where you're going, this doesn't work. But if there was someone right here uh, who can see where you're dropping down, you can drop down. Oh, I don't like this. He's an Overwatch. Boop, boop, boop. I'm going to climb right back up the pipe, and I'm not going to get Overwatched. But of course, you can't do it if, for example, uh, you can be seen from the start. If you could be, you know, if the guy's on Overwatch here, and you jump down, that's one tile of movement. You're allowed that free tile. The Overwatch won't trigger. But then when you move back up, he can see where you're going. 
you're still moving within his uh, cone of vision, and he's still going to get to shoot you. Anyway, enough waffling, I just thought that was worth taking a tangent to explain an incredibly useful uh, tactic. And yeah, in case you didn't actually know the first part of that, yes, you can, um, you can move one tile when you're under Overwatch and not trigger the Overwatch. Uh, vitally important for navigating some sticky situations. Alright, now we just need to deal with this sectoid and that's going to mop things up for us. Uh, and considering how shitty his position is, I don't think he's got a lot uh, running for him right now. I don't think he's got a lot going for him. I don't think he's got a lot going for him at all. Rolling out. Could there be another pod in the back corner I'm about to activate? Let's find out. Ooh, not today. Not today. All right. Hmm, what to do with Scuba Boo 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 Man? Let's uh, start moving him to get a roof shot. Now, I'm not going to hunker here. The Sectoid could get one point of damage on me if I hunker, if he psychics me. Why do I not even want to take a single point of damage at this point? Well, this is something I forgot, but now that someone mentioned, uh, mentioned it in a discussion I was reading, it all came back to me. You get bonus XP if you perfectly ace a mission, and that means not taking any damage or having anyone killed, or even having anyone panic. I don't think anyone's panicked, has they? No. And I haven't taken any points of damage, so if I refrain from taking even a single point of damage on this operation, I'm going to get an XP bonus. And we want more XP, so let's go for that. There wasn't another floater, was there? HOLY SHIT! HOLY FUCK, YOU LITTLE SON OF A BITCH! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> you are aggressive as a little son of a bitch! Um... Wow, you can you can see you can see the blood in his eyes. This is Satan. He needs to be put down. There you go. Another one down. That's it. Good that was a uh, was that a four pod? I think that was just a four pod heavy mission. We got off really lucky on how many pods there were on that one. I was expecting five pods. Um, but there you go. With a little help from our friend uh, Tubby the teleprompter. Uh, which I hope explained things a little better for you, and if not, was incredibly fun for me to use. Uh, we did pretty good on Operation Defiant Dream. I think we've avenged uh, the results of last mission quite a bit. Uh, and I think hopefully that shows you guys uh, one way to play the Burger King map. At least the way I prefer to play it. Although, of course, when something like a floater, you know, pondering the meaning of life and failing to shoot you when an obvious flank happens, it kind of takes away from your credibility when you say something like, this is how you play this map. Because of course, if that floater killed that assault, I mean, we still would have cleaned up the rest of the map the same way we did, but you couldn't have called it a guide on how to play the map when you lost someone. But I'd like to think that you guys can look past that in when you consider that we missed some really uh, good accuracy shots to get in that horrible position. So I think that kind of evens out with what happened with the floater to mean the strategy seemed fairly sound and I think if everything had balanced out it would have worked out uh, a lot smoother without needing that floater to give us mercy. <laughs> but anyway, enough justification, let us return to base. God, that little sectoid was crazy. Seriously. Impressive work, Commander. Our soldiers have to be feeling good after a mission like that. Hell, I'm feeling good after a mission like that. No promotions, which is sad, but, you know, good mission, good mission. We even got a little bit of meld. We could have got more, but we got tucked down in pretty hard contact early on. There you go, not a bad mission at all. 100 bucks, always we good. be in touch, Commander. Um, now, I have to do two things. Firstly, I have to remember, because it's been like three or four days since I played the last mission, Maybe even longer. Uh, I have to remember what the hell I was doing in my base. Uh, and second, uh, I have to reevaluate my laser weapon choices based on experience I've been getting in other offline campaigns, where I'm obviously further ahead. Namely, um, I've really noticed that I don't use my laser SMGs at all as soon as I hit laser shotguns. Um, now, how far is my advanced beam off? 26 days still. At least one laser SMG is going to get use on my scout, I think. But, I don't think I'm going to build a second one for my engineer, I don't know. I might just build him a full length laser rifle. Because I've really been noticing that, uh, in my campaigns later on, 
Uh, I've just been taking laser rifles on my engineer, honestly. I've just not even been feeling I really desperately need that extra movement on him. And I've just been preferring the increased uh, damage and crit and ammo of a full-length laser rifle. Um, laser carbine, I'm still going to build one for the Rocketeer this time around. Uh, but here's something, uh, food for thought with carbines, is in the next beta, beta 14, which we will be able to upgrade to without needing a, a new campaign, because it should be just bug fixes and stuff, not a lot of new features. Um, when beta 14 hits, they've changed it so carbines will no longer grant their aim bonus to rocketeers. And that's really all I used it for, um, most cases, so I'm probably not going to bother with building that many laser carbines when that happens either, because they were mainly a rocketeer crutch for me. So really, it's probably going to be back to basics with the full length, full damage laser rifles. Um, but, like I said, uh, let me respect your time again uh, and turn off the record while I figure out what the hell I was building and then turn it back on instead of uh, waffling the whole time. Alright, so I can't really um, remember what the hell else I was building. It can't have been anything important because I don't have enough money and there's nothing I really want to build structure-wise. Uh, but I have collected my thoughts from uh, future campaigns, or well, past campaigns that are in the future in how far along they are, uh, on the topic of laser weapons. So here's what I've been noticing is that I really don't use my laser SMGs at all uh, once I've got laser shotguns. I just don't bother with them. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut back on one of these laser shadow rays because I don't I don't really take them for my uh, engineers I've been noticing. So we'll cut back on a laser shadow ray. Luckily we just started them, so we're not going to lose we're going to lose like a day at best, which isn't bad. We're going to replace that with a full length laser rifle. Always good to have more laser rifles. Uh, and then what else? Well, we've got a heater coming, the laser machine pistol. That's good for the gunslinger assault because gunslinger takes away the range penalties that pistols have now turns them back into a real secondary weapon instead of just a, like a, a kind of weaker backup. That's fine. But for some other troops who could use a weaker backup, but you don't want to put that mobility penalty on, uh, the laser pistol is actually a good choice. You're a, you're a damage down from the laser machine pistol, but the fact that it doesn't degrade your mobility at all makes it good to put on people who probably won't get any use out of it, but if they do, it'll be nice to have. So you don't have to feel bad that you're taking a heater on your infantry and he never uses it, and he can't get to places he could otherwise because of that half tiler movement. But then when he does need a secondary three missions in, you've got a laser pistol when he runs out of ammo. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to buy two laser pistols. Now in the future, one of these laser pistols is going to constantly be in rotation due to my covert operative in the third month. They're going to be using the laser pistol. And for the reasons I just described, you don't want to put a heater on your covert operative uh, you want to put a laser pistol, because the main advantage of your covert operative is mobility, getting to the transmitters and hitting as many of them as they can in a row to keep Exalt without, um, from firing. So you don't want to put that heater on them, because it lowers their mobility. And that little tile, you wouldn't think it, but I have seen that half tile of movement uh, just be just enough to not hit a transmitter. And then, you know, it's the difference between mission wipe or not devil really is in the details. So laser pistol isn't much of a trade-off in damage, but still keeps their mobility in prime shape. So we're going to get a couple of laser pistols there. Uh, we've replaced the laser SMG with a laser rifle, uh, and then that's going to do it for now. We've got, uh, let me double check here that I bought enough for everyone, because I don't know, maybe I didn't have enough money. I've got for my infantry, my gunner, my rocketeer, my gunslinger assault, that is four. My engineer, five. Uh, my scout, six. That's for anyone, doesn't count. And for my medic, seven, when I get a seventh spot. So until I get squad size eight, which won't be forever, uh, this is going to do me. And also, I'm going to get uh, laser sniper rifles and laser scatter guns with my next research after xenobiology, hopefully. So that's going to help a lot too. But for now, that should do me on the laser weapons front. Uh, now, like I said, uh, don't, see, don't think I've got anything to build just yet. Haven't got the money, and even if I did, uh, you know, labs and workshops aren't worth it for me early. Don't need another uplink yet, because I really can't afford to do another round of satellites. Probably will be a few months before I can, honestly. So don't expect any satellites just yet. I uh, don't need any more power just yet. And a foundry I can wait for until there's really critical stuff. Like, I start using the alloy shiv, I'll need shiv suppression. Um, thin man autopsy into in improved medkits is nice, but there's no need to rush for it, and that is a lot of money. So, when I need every dollar I can get right now, the foundry can wait for another few months as well. Alright. Research is ticking along on xenobiology. 
Okay. Oh god, I I just brought back memories by clicking that. Whoops. I didn't mean to click that. Um Alright. Do I need to hire any more soldiers? No, I've got still got a few rookies to train up. Quite a fatigue spiral I'm in here, quite an exhaustion spiral. Let's hope we can get out of that soon. Um, one thing I will say real quickly is, a few people have asked me, I think, uh, I can't, can't remember, but a few people have asked me, and I'll just make it clear. Um, obviously in vanilla, you rushed as many satellites as you could uh, every month. You would be building a new uplink and new satellites. Why am I not doing that in Long War? Now, I can't remember if I've touched on this in detail before, but let's make it clear now. Uplinks are much more expensive now. They're much harder to get to. Uh, they give you less benefit, and they're less, uh, you know, satellite rushing is less necessary. There's reasons for all of these things, and let me run through them as quickly as I can so I don't bore people who are already know what I'm talking about, but at the same time, explaining it really clearly for people. So, let's cover it all one at a time. First, you've got the fact that they're um, very expensive. Uh, $200 was probably what they were in vanilla, I think, but money is tighter in Long War. There's more things to buy, there's more items, there's more structures, there's more troops, there's more interceptors to hire. There is more shit to spend your money on in Long War, and it's all more important. Uh, than uplinks and satellites. And I'll tell you why with the other reasons. The other reasons are, it's harder to get engineers. You can't get engineers by building workshops anymore. They have to come as rewards from the end of the month, from council missions, from council trades, all that kind of stuff. So you can't depend on being able to build a workshop in the second month and go boom, straight into another uplink next month. You can't depend on having enough engineers. And even if you could, um, we then need to factor in a third point is interceptors. The air game is much harder than in vanilla. Now you've seen this firsthand if you've been watching or if you've played for yourself. In vanilla you could put, you know, a smattering of two or three interceptors on each continent and pretty much every interception was guaranteed to win, more or less. Like, you'd, you'd, you'd bring down every UFO that came at you, unless it was huge and you weren't meant to yet. It wasn't an issue. Um, so, you know, you could afford to just sprinkle a few interceptors around everywhere and cover satellites pretty much wherever the hell you wanted. You can't do that in Long War. Um, you, you, you just really can't. Uh, like, I mean, so much so that I'm just focusing all my goddamn satellites and interceptors on one continent right now. Because I know I can't afford buying another six interceptors to properly defend another continent. Uh, and even with those six interceptors, there's no guarantee you'll take down all the UFOs coming at you. So you can't afford to safely expand early on unless you're devoting huge pools of cash into your interceptor fleet. Uh, and finally, uh, getting on to, you know, yet another reason why you don't satellite rush in Long satellite War. Uplink facilities at maximum capacity. It's just not necessary. Uplink required. It just isn't necessary. Look at this panic. In Iron Man Impossible uh, Vanilla XCOM, you had to satellite rush because you'd lose countries if you didn't. The panic was always skyrocketing because there were three abductions every time and you couldn't save all of them. Panic was going off the chain everywhere and the only way to stop the panic from rising and to save those countries was to put a satellite on them. It was literally a race against time where you were trying to rush as many satellites as you could, not only for money, uh, but also to... Um, uh, but but also to save those countries. Long War is different. We'll monitor that contact, but I don't think uh, it's related to UFO Thank you, UFO thank you, Bradford. Long War is different. Um, you've, uh, you know, panic increases much more slowly. You've got better chances at uh, slowing the spread of panic. At worst, aliens have better tools at focusing on one continent or country, like terror missions as many times as they want, and bombing runs, and etc. And they can really focus one country out. But even then, a satellite's not going to stop that as much. You know, you're not going to be able to save them with a satellite as much. Uh, so that's not really a concern anymore, uh, not as much anyway, it's not as much about panic as it is about spreading your interceptor coverage, uh, shooting down UFOs to stop the missions happening in the first place, uh, and getting more funding is really the main focus of satellites now. Um, and considering you get a small amount of their funding even without a satellite anyway, uh, it's just yet another reason why there's no need to rush satellites anymore. So sorry for those of you who already understood all that, I know that was about five minutes of your time that you could have skipped. Um, but I hope that explains to everyone so there's no doubt why I'm not satellite rushing uh, and why if you've just come from vanilla you know it might seem strange but why I think it makes a lot of sense that that's not the thing you do anymore. So with all that waffling done uh, I think everything's good to go here and we can get set up for the next mission. Who's my new troops? Hmm. 
Potato, Squint, J-Balls, and Hunter. Good troops, good troops. I forgot I had more on the way already. Let's carry on. Eight weapon fragments for one engineer. Yeah, it's a good deal. Weapon fragments are pretty cheap. My officer training school finally finishes because I built it slow because I am a moron. Oh man, and I'm two ranks off being able to get squad size one. I really need that. Well, that's going to be at least one more mission we have to play with only six soldiers, but hopefully next mission will be the last one. And then after that, we'll get the rank ups we need to uh, get additional um, squad size. For those of you who've never played Long War, um, y your total ranks is your total uh, levels amongst all your troops uh, cumulatively adding to this value. So the more troops you have and the better promoted they are, um, the higher you can go and what you can get. But at least we can get officers right off the bat with the money. Oh, and I could sure use uh, UFO training up to get those extra ranks. So let's see if we can down this little sucker. Come on, Casper. Bring it home. All right, Casper. We're in pursuit. What you're going to want to do uh, is just bring yourself in and just hit right about there. Yep. If you could just hit the target, Casper. Fuck me. You really couldn't, Contact could you? You detected. really couldn't hit the target. Come on. Enemy is you need to down this little guy or we're going to be considerably fire. worse off than if you had. And, oh my god. Oh my god. You have to bring him down. Why is this difficult for you people? Damn it. Contact lost. And like I was saying before, even with a lot of interceptors on one continent, sometimes you can't even take down a scout. Ah, oh, god, I hope there's no fighter follow-up to that, or I'm going to be uh, in trouble with regards to satellites. Looks like we're going to get away with that, he was just scouting. Uh, yeah, I'll take that trade again, as long as I'm going to have enough left over. Let's see, advanced beam means 20, 25 fragments? No worries, no worries. Yeah, I've got more than enough fragments just to keep giving them away. Eight fragments for an engineer is very good. Alright, let's keep coming. Contact detected. Oh, you're back for more, are you? You're back to fucking taunt me again. Well, I can hardly kill you. Maybe if that... 12 hour interceptor was ready for you, I could have taken you down, but with Stingray missiles, I'm unlikely to take you down in one interception, and then if a fighter comes afterwards, I need the Stingray -er to fight off the fighter. Contact detected. So, you little son of a bitch, I've got to let you go. Contact detected. Ooh. Now, are you an abductor, or what are you? Let's find out. You're going for Japan. You're going for Japan. No, you're we going for China. What are you? Disengaging. That's an abductor. So here come the abductions. Commander, we're tracking several reported abductions. All right, you did take holodrome. a dog leg in the uh, the Japan. Locked in. All right, let's gear it up. Urban large structure. Sorry, what was it? It was a moderate, moderate urban large structure. Alright, let me uh, pick my guys, gear up, and uh, yeah, we'll get right into it. Alright, so let me show you what I'm working with here. So, um, right off the bat, let me point out, it's an urban large structure, and while you might think that automatically means you're going into a close combat situation inside a building, 
Uh, not necessarily. Some of the really long maps in the game can be classified as urban large structure, the keyword being large structure, not structures, a single large building. This means that maps that can fall under this category are, for example, the greatest example is uh, the big interior metro railway. That's, a, that's one building, yes, technically, but I certainly wouldn't think of it as an urban like CQC environment, so it's important to uh, make sure you don't make that mistake when you think of the connotations of an urban large structure entry. Um, it's, it can be quite long range, so you want a middle of the road balance kind of squad. In this case, I'm going to be taking a sniper in the event, uh, you know, in the possible eventuality that we're facing quite a long range map with a standard loadout there. Um, it's uh, a little bit of a reunion of uh, Frag's finest here with Medve, Fugelman, and Renzel coming back into play. And then we've got uh, Scuba, who is very close to ranking up, and Kilroy, who I'm also trying to get leveled up on the uh, experience train because I love having high level assaults. Uh, so why did I pick who I picked? Uh, you probably noticed there was a lot of picking going on if you were watching the speed up. Uh, I actually even went back out to check, I don't know if I, I'll show up, but I went back out to check what date it is, because I'm of course worried about the April Terra mission, which is pretty regular even in Long War. Um, you have to be ready for missions like that to happen, and you have to think, I don't want to fatigue my A-team, but you also can't let fear rule you. This is so important, you can't be too afraid to fight at your best uh, capability. Now, absolute worst case, of course, you can f uh, double fatigue people if the terror mission happens, we could send our A-team, uh, and that's that. And that's fine. You don't want to do that if you don't have to, because it's going to put you into a, a fatigue spiral, potentially, where you keep having to fatigue people to make up for the fatigued people you fatigued, and then fatigue never ends, and then you die. You don't want to go into the fatigue spiral, uh, but hopefully, you know, we don't have to do that. So, even knowing that the terror mission could strike, why did I pick who I picked? Because you can't let fear rule you. Best case, um, best case is, you know, we don't take these people, the terror mission doesn't happen, and then these people never get used until the terror mission, because we're constantly afraid of keeping our A-team ready, and then you never level your A-team, and then you end up with no sergeants or anything by the third month. All you've got is corporals left, because you didn't level them. And then you're fucked. So what you want to look at there is, what am I really losing if I couldn't take my A-teamer? Well, this is a, this is a corporal gunner, Medve. He's got heat ammo. Uh, in comparison... If a terror mission sprung up and I had to take Lance Corporal Cell, no heat ammo. Okay, you know, boohoo. It sucks, but right now when there's only Seekers that are really threatening in the robot department and drones, it's not that big a loss. Uh, same deal with Kilroy, uh, Corporal Assault. You know, I could take a Specialist Assault, and I'm still going to shotgun the hell out of things. I'm just I'm not going to have Close Combat or Gunslinger. Obviously, it's not ideal. And the Assault's the worst example, because on a terror mission, close combat's very important. But I hope you kind of get what I'm trying to say here, that, you know, Fugelman. I'm going to lose holo targeting and Scanner, sure. Uh, but I can take a Scanner on someone, and I can take a Specialist Scout. So we're okay, and that's probably because we haven't got very high ranks yet. So we haven't really got that much of an A-team yet anyway. But sorry to, to go off on a tangent yet again. Uh, let me quickly run through my loadout. It's very standard, I don't need to explain much. Uh, standard saw, scope to make flush that little bit more accurate, and to make high damaging shots more accurate with the LMG, or with the saw. Medkit on him, make it on the sniper, I've explained this before, they're uh, good classes to have in the back with medkits, uh, and to keep acid immune on the gunner. Uh, infantry and Kilroy with uh, ceramic, ceramic, uh, scope on the infantry for more accurate shots, flashbang, flashbang on the close range assaulters, ceramics on the close range assaulters, Scope Rocket Carbine on Renzel for the accuracy. You've seen all this before, I don't need to explain it too much. So let's get into the fight itself. Actually, I've forgotten one critical thing. Excuse me. Renzel, Kilroy, Scuba, Medve, Fugel, Kung Tot. It's one critical thing I haven't done here, and that is get my officers. So what can I sell here to make 30 bucks? Make a quick 30 bucks. Everything's really good. People are telling me to sell alien stasis tanks. No, these are actually useful for things later on. Uh, I, I've never used it, so I don't know how many I need to keep, but I do know that you want to keep them. Mm, you know what, I'm sure by the time we research that, we'll get some more. So let's just sell two of them, because we've got so many of them, we have eight. We're not even meant to have that many at this point. Uh, and then that'll do it, because there's nothing else I really want to sell. But you don't want to sell all of them, make sure you keep as many as you can. If you, if you don't have to sell them, don't sell them. And now we're going to get our tactical officers. So for those of you who haven't long warred before, uh, this is a conversion of the medal system into officer rankings, basically. So who's that good officer going to be? Well, our officer needs to be someone who sticks with the middle of the group, because a lot of the perks the officers grant to the squad through leadership 
are based on proximity. So it doesn't want to be like an assault. It doesn't want to be someone who's going to be out there running ahead of the group. Scout's going to be running out ahead of the group too. Gunner, perfect. Gunner's always going to be in the middle of the squad. Um, the limitations for making an officer is it has to be a corporal or higher, and then each level of new officer promotion, like lieutenant the captain, um, that officer has to have been on a mission five times in that rank. So a captain would have to go on five missions as a captain before they could become a major, so on and so on. Um, also, they get like slightly more fatigue, like I think one day more fatigue. So you don't want to put it on people who are your superstars, like assault, so you need on every mission as well. Uh, gunners are really good and I love them, but I think it's worth it here for the fact that um, the gunner will be a good choice for it. The gunner will be in the middle of the squad. Uh, but these ones aren't based on proximity. The lieutenant options are squad receives plus one will per different nationality in the squad, or all units in the squad have post-mission fatigue reduced by one day. Now at best you're going to get plus eight will from this. There's a couple of reasons I'd never take this. For one, plus eight will isn't that important to me. Uh, you know, I usually don't worry about will too much as a stat. There's not a lot of ways I have to improve it because I never take steadfast. I don't take this perk. I don't use Psy very often or very early. So I generally just don't worry about it. Um, but one thing that is quite cool is this one. All units in the squad have post-mission fatigue reduced by one day. Awesome. Can't tell you how many times people have been on fatigue by one day and I needed them to be a little bit quicker. Officer helps with that a lot. So we take Stay Frosty. And this is really why you want to get those lieutenants as quickly as possible. It's going to ease your rotation uh, just that little bit. So there you go, pick that. There's a nice little medal for uh, Gunner, for Medve. And you guys are now looking at uh, Lieutenant Medve. Right there. And you can go and click and make them do it again whenever you want. And sometimes they do this pose, which is what I was hoping would happen. <laughs> Now this is reporting for duty. But you know, they get over it eventually once you okay, well he's not getting over it. They they, they do get over it. They I promise. Come on, Medve. There you go, be reasonable. So you see not every time. <laughs> but anyway, back into it. I just uh, had to remember to do the officer. Uh, and it looks like it's actually remembered most of my people. Iku's not going, but I guess everyone else was already in the top. Who else was I taking? I was taking Scuba. Just check that it hasn't eaten any of your equipment. Sometimes when it takes away your squad, it likes to take their equipment away from them as well. But everyone looks pretty good to go. So let's hit the NOS. Fuck off, Scout. Touching down. Ooh, it's this we'll one. We're heading into Japan for the next mission. We've gotten several reports indicating that the aliens have stepped up the number of attempted abductions. We'll have to move quickly if we want to slow the spread of panic. Quite an interesting level, this one. Uh, certainly one I had a lot of experience with in Enemy Unknown, even one that got played uh, one or two times on the original Iron Man Impossible series. So it'll be no stranger to viewers, even if you've never played the game yourself. Um, quite interesting. Ah, this, this right side on the right of the map is your real thorn and once you get through that you can exploit the rest of the map pretty easily if you can take that middle ground. Uh, it's not King of the Burger Hill. Oh, I, I fucked up my joke that was already terrible. It's not Burger King of the Hill, uh, but it is still a little bit King of the Hill. So we'll get more into that with some more teleprompting, telestrating, John Madden planning action uh, next episode at the start. Uh, but until then, Hope you guys like this one, and uh, we'll catch you for Operation Unceasing Shield soon. See you then.